Hello, everyone. My name is Lauri Haapanen, and I'm from the University of Jyväskylä, Finland. And I'm Ville Manninen from the University of Vasa, also in Finland. We are going to give you a short presentation on the concepts of ethic and emic, and how they have been used in the study of journalistic work practices. I hope you find it interesting. Now, imagine you are a researcher sent out to document the daily life of an unfamiliar culture. You observe the people raising either of their hand and arm near their face. You write down how often this happens, who performs this gesture, and what happens before and after. These observations can be termed as ethic data. It is based on how you, an outsider, understand the behavior. And no matter how hard you try, you cannot fully understand what is going on. Raising one's hand can mean a lot of different things. If you want to understand the gesture, you need to ask the people performing it. An insider's explanation of the behavior could be called EBIC data. It can come from an interview, but also from other sources, for example, from a journal entry or a book on etiquette. Different scholars have different ideas of what ethic and emic mean. For Lauri and I, the most important thing is perspective. Whose understanding does the data reflect? Ethic data is produced by an outsider or the researcher analyst. And emic data is produced by an insider, a practitioner informant. Both perspectives are valuable and it is often useful to ask both what is happening and what does it mean? There are times when combining ethic and emic perspectives is particularly useful. For example, when studying routinized processes that have a mental aspect to them. Lauri, can you say how many times you use your cell phone during the day? Many times for sure, but I cannot even guess how many. An observer could pretty easily count that number. But instead of the sheer number, it is probably more interesting to know why you are using your cell phone. Can you tell me about that? Mm. At least I send text messages, I read emails, and I check every now and then what time it is. I'm sure you're telling the truth, but those are just your ad hoc generalizations. It's not an exact description of today, right? Yes, that's right. But we can get more accurate results if we combine ethic and emic perspectives in data production. For example, by stimulating your memory with a photo, we can reveal uses that would otherwise be hidden. Here is a picture of you and your phone. From an ethic perspective alone, one might think that you are reading a text message or email or checking what time it is. Yes. But actually here in this photo, I'm getting on the tram and checking if my mobile ticket is still valid. Right. Using the phone is a routine activity that combines the physical and mental aspects. And this is also true in the field of Willis and mine special interest, journalism. Doing journalism requires both mental and physical action and it is also easy to disturb these processes. For example, a think-aloud protocol cannot be used when a journalist is interviewing a source or immersed in writing a news story. However, if carefully planned, the creation of ethic and emic datasets can support each other, and that's why we decided to review how our colleagues have combined ethic and emic data in their research. Originally, we wanted to tell you about an unfinished study. However, the delay of this conference has allowed us to finish the research. In fact, you can already read the article online and it is available in open access. We started off by searching databases for interesting research articles. 
we only included studies that examine journalistic work processes through combining ethic and emic. That left us with 228 articles. Then we analyzed those articles in detail. Here are some of the findings we think are worth your attention. For example, we investigated what aspects of the journalistic work process have been studied. As this table shows, a large amount of studies focuses on the first steps of the editorial process. Topic selection, point of view selection, and sourcing. And at the same time, there are many essential aspects that have received little attention. For example, photography and videography, editing process, management, layout and arrangement, and social media use. Our study also revealed a similar imbalance in the types and platforms of media studied. An overwhelming majority of the research focuses on professional legacy media instead of, for example, citizen journalism. And most studies focus on newspapers, while other publishing platforms like television or radio receive much less attention. In addition, after manually reviewing more than 3,000 research articles, we made an unfortunate and alarming observation. Sometimes it was very difficult for us to analyze the research methods. We simply could not figure out what the researcher had done, or even which medium they had studied. In other words, descriptions of the research methods and the data sets are often vague, superficial, and incomplete. Therefore, we suggest that authors, editors, and reviewers pay more attention to this aspect in the future. We hope you found this interesting. If you'd like to learn more about our study, you can check out the full article on the website of Journalism. For now, enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye for now.